Hello everyone and welcome to GP Road to Australia vlog part number one, episode one. So in this episode we're gonna answer some questions that we asked you uh, to post on our Facebook page, uh, GP Laser Tag, and we're happy to get a lot of questions and, and I'll go through the answers. Uh, first question is from Slanesh and he's asking if Yor is gonna win solos. Well, ever since Milky stopped playing solos and he doesn't play anymore, Yor has more or less dominated the solo uh, solo competitions, at least in Europe and and in the Nordic, and now also uh, last year at Worlds he won he won it by a landslide. So I don't know if he's gonna win, but I expect him to do really well because he he is a real beast in in solo gaming. So. He's gonna make the finals for sure, and then in finals anything can happen, but I would expect him to have a top position, like top 5 is my prediction, and probably gonna be quite tight about uh, the medals, uh, podium podium places. Uh, Slanish continues with, are you going to have a drinking day? Well, yeah. That's the answer. Yes, we're we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have drinking day before the competition. Probably somewhere mid competition. Uh, we like to have fun during the comp and during the, the tournament, and that's also a way for us to loosen up a little bit after first games and and have a lot of fun together. Because for us, zone is not only about the competition anymore it's about hanging out with friends and and gp has become like a second family for us and these are the rare opportunities for us also to uh, enjoy and and get a lot of new experiences uh, within the team and and with the friends so yeah there is some drinking games drinking days not games <laughs> uh, involved and planned already are Kutamo going to win uh, Lord of the Rings? Uh, I'm not 100% sure if he is uh, participating, but a little bit the same as you are. Like, I think he's going to do well. He's the reigning world champion. So, and he faced some of the better Australian Lord of the Rings players already at Worlds. So, he's going to be up there. Um, he's, he's really good. He has not been training a ton of that on that uh, I mean he has more been training with the team about uh, arena gameplay and and the new settings so I don't know I don't know it's hard to say I'm not myself not an expert on Lord of the Rings maybe we can get uh, Kutamo's uh, prediction and and what he thinks uh, when we make a post about the the Sinclair uh, sinks list that is going to come out in, in a week or two or something. So, yeah, I'm, I will ask Kutama for his opinion. But I would say if he plays, he has a genuine shot at the final. Uh, I think if I have to compare these two, which I don't maybe like, but if I have to, I would maybe edge that I wait more from Yor in solos than from Kutama in Lord of the Rings. But that's a wild guess. That's a wild guess. So I'm not sure. Uh, what team except Cobras and Maroons are you, your competitions? Uh, any team. Any team and every team, I would say. This is something completely new for us. We're going into a tournament quite blind. It's a new setting for us. Most of the teams we haven't uh, met. So it's a little bit like when we went to Sherman Oaks against uh, the Legends. We hadn't met that Legend roster. We hadn't met most of the... American teams there, but we knew the settings uh, which we were comfortable on uh, Now we add like a new setting so it's really hard for me to point out any team or teams that will uh, Will beat us or will be like equal to us and competing with us, but I would say uh, Cobras for sure they won uh, the hardest pre-nationals So that's gonna be number one and we know them from worlds and we enjoy a lot playing against them we we think that they are like smart players and they understand the game quite well. And that, that's what makes it, uh, you know, quite challenging and different because you have to not only play against good pack skills, but you have to play against tactical players a uh, little bit. Yeah, there are other Nordic teams 
uh, that do that well, but but Cobras did it really well and and really surprised us uh, and impressed us on that that side of the uh, game in in the worlds in France this year. Uh, Maroons, yeah, we haven't actually met them at least for a long while. At least I haven't. Uh, as as GP, we haven't ever. I don't think they were in 2011 uh, Worlds. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but but yeah, Maroons. Of course, they're the reigning champions uh, three years in a row in Australia. So I guess they're still gonna be like number one, uh, the team to beat. Even if they say that they haven't trained, that they wanted to to uh, get out or or what do you call it? They wanted to resign, but. If you beat something three years in a row and you still compete, you're the team to beat. So Maroons, Cobras, those. But except for those two, I would say when we watched uh, the pre-nationals a little bit and, and what we have talked with local players or Australian players, I would lift up uh, Wolfpack for sure. Young team, super uh, hungry team, like eager. And... And it looked good how they played. They played solid uh, game throughout the pre-nationals. So I think they're gonna be hard, 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 hard to beat. Mm, except for them, one up looked looked solid. Looked uh, like a team. Well, <laughs> looked like a team, <laughs> but they had they had good results at least. So that might be. And then sharks. Uh, I don't know that much, but I've heard from a lot of Australian players that Sharks are going to be really, really hard to beat and they're going to be up there this year. So, yeah, that's maybe a wild guess on top five, maybe for me. But as I said, uh, we don't know the rest of the Australian players that or teams. We know players from uh, a team here and from a team there, but we don't know the teams that well, so it's hard for us to guess. But but I would say that those are like Maroons, Cobras, 1UP, Wolfpack, Sharks, Maybe that's going to be the top five and then we try to to make our way up there as well and, and, and mix it up between these guys. So, yeah, I hope I hope that answered your questions, Slanish, and, and thank you for those. Uh, Blake, Blake Mitchell asks, uh, did you watch much of the pre-Nationals 3 stream? Uh, we didn't watch it as a team. We didn't have like a get together. We were actually thinking about it, but but life came in the way. Uh, I got injured with my foot, and and everyone had something to do. But I think everyone has watched uh, some games here and there, and most of us were watching the the system D or the two track that you played, and then then some of us watched the finals. And what are your first impressions of the maze? Uh, first impressions of the maze when we watched the map was that it's going to be quite good. It looks big. And usually the bigger the arena is, the better it is for us because we have more movement and we can control bigger areas of the arena. Small arenas like our here in Helsinki is quite small. Usually makes the game really hectic and really messy in a way that you don't always you can't be able to part, uh, like uh, tell in advance what's going to happen or predict what's going to happen and it makes it hard and and uh, things change super fast but it's easier to to have a two-way game like both defense and and offense as a team maybe and uh, but there is also a bigger chance of luck because you cannot really control a position as you can in bigger arenas. So, first impression watching the the map like uh, printed out was that okay, this can suit us, really good. And now watching the pre-national stream, I think we like the we like the bases, and I think uh, we have some ideas already, like how we wanna defend, how we wanna attack. But that really comes down to when we get there that we're going to see more and we're going to get the first feelings because it's always easy to to make up something like uh, sketches of your tactics or something uh, based on paper but when you get there that's when it really counts and that's when you start like really planning and it's even sometimes bad if you do too much uh, work in advance 
and then you come into the arena and you're too like your mindset is too strongly made on that what you have been thinking as a team before you even saw the arena in real life so if you make that mistake it can be harder to get out of that mindset instead of going into the arena with an open mindset and being like okay let's see this now here so so yeah but the first impression is that it looks good it looks fun for uh for competitive play and and yeah i'm we are really eager to play on a bigger arena in finland all the arenas are quite small uh at the moment so so a bigger arena will be a welcome change for us and it's more back to back to basics and back to the roots for us like to to arenas like what we want we we want and we like big arenas Mm, how much training? Uh, sorry, yeah. Blake uh, continues asking, with how much training in the maze does your team plan to do in the be- days before the competition? Well, uh, uh, we we are quite new to this training thing because in Finland, before a competition, you don't really have training slots. This is something we actually did for the first time now um, in Worlds. In Belfort, France, 2017 was the first time we actually had like a training slot. Uh, we had one hour uh, training just for for GP before the competition. Uh, unfortunately, that training didn't go too well. We we played two six minute games and then everyone was too hungover to <laughs> to train. So we just ended up walking around the arena and and looking at places and get get a feeling about it. So, yeah, our history of training on a new arena is not that great. Uh, but now, before Australia, we're participating in the in the comp training, or, or you have this, like, kind of grid where you have X amount of teams and every team get, I think, six games. So, yeah, in that training, we're participating. And now we're a little bit thinking if we want one hour for ourselves somewhere on, on Tuesday uh, or not. But uh, it comes also down to our trip planning, which is not 100% set yet, because we're going to be in Melbourne uh, on Monday, and we might be staying in Melbourne for the evening to to play some some membership games or, or fun games that, that they are going to host there. So it comes down a little bit to that, that if we drive up to, to Albury, early Monday or something, midday Monday, uh, yeah, probably we're going to try to ske- squeeze in one hour of training or at least like get to look at the arena because for us, it's not about the training in itself. Of course, it helps, but it's also just to walk around the arena and, and feel the arena and, and look at the different lines that you can make and and talk uh we feel that it's sometimes even better just walking around and talking instead of playing because if you play it's easy to focus on the play uh gaming and if you have like uh if we only go with gp inside the arena and no one knows the arena uh, it might be that we just focus on you know like uh scoring and tagging packs instead of like really analyzing it and it might be even easier to analyze it without a pack on so yeah We'll see. It, it's open, but we're at least we're gonna be in the in the grid training. Uh, I think we were in the group three or something in in the afternoon, and and that's gonna be fun because that's the first time we do something like this, and we're gonna meet new teams already then, and it's gonna be really fun to have like no pressure in the games. We can do whatever we want, and we can have fun with the with the teams we're playing against and. We're planning on a, a small surprises uh, to to hand out to captains and stuff. So we'll see. But in the end of the day, it's going to be really fun. And, and the whole trip for us, uh, we're focusing on, of course, we're focusing on doing as well as we can in the competition. We want to win it. But we also want to see, uh, and we're going to ask a lot of you local people, Australians, about tips on what to do after the competition what we should see where we should go because our trip plan is quite open as i said and we haven't set anything in stone we know that we're gonna land in sydney we're gonna be in sydney for some days then we're gonna fly to melbourne be in melbourne uh come to albury and after albury we don't know maybe tasmania maybe melbourne again maybe some other place but but it's open and, uh, and yeah but but some some training, some training. 
if you want to train with us, Blake, then just put a message and, and <laughs> we'll see how we make it happen. Uh, but yeah, I know like, for instance, Cobras, they, they trained a lot before Worlds and I, I guess they're going to train there a lot before before Nationals as well. So it depends. Every team has their own strategy and their own routine, how they want to do stuff. And I know that Australians have been more to this training. It's coming now to Europe through Worlds, which I think is good. And I think that's also how Worlds should work, that we get the best ideas from different parts of the world. Uh, and then we can start to modify the other parts of the world to to get the better parts and then build up a, a more competitive and, and, and a healthy scene for everyone in competitive laser tag. But that's another discussion uh, for another time. But yeah, all in all, I want to end this with saying that we're really eager. Uh, I hope I get my foot fixed uh, before before the competition and even before the tra travel so I can enjoy Sydney and and go out, out to Blue Mountains and some nightclubs. But the biggest part is, of course, the competition. And we are really looking forward to meeting all of you new people that we haven't met before. Playing against new people is always fun. You always learn the most when you see new kind of tactics, new kind of uh, games, new kind of like understanding of the game and mindsets of the game. And especially now in a different setting, I think we're going to be better players after this tournament than we are before and it doesn't matter if we're going to win or not it's going to be a huge experience and and we're going to uh, gain a lot and we also hope that we could bring something to you Australians and uh, to everyone who will watch the stream I hope we can show some new aspects of the game and and give you something to think about and and have a, like an open dialogue about about rules and and settings and everything and uh, and that's why we're not talking about settings so much before the tournament a lot of people have asked us about settings but we really don't want to get into that before we want to play the hardest uh, tournament the biggest the best tournament on that setting and then when we have done that then we have the experience then we have the knowledge to speak and really compare the settings so so yeah, we're going to learn a lot uh, and we sincerely hope that we can teach uh, or at least give something to think about to you as well. And and yeah, uh, I'm glad for everyone who, who listened to this and uh, make sure to follow us on, on YouTube and on our Facebook channel, GP Laser Tag. Uh, keep yourself healthy, keep practicing and see you in the biggest tournament in competitive laser tag on the planet.